What's up, everybody? This is Quet. Happy New Year. Um, this is my first video of the new year. I figured I would start this year off how I started my YouTube channel um, and do a code challenge. I do have another video coming a little later today, but I figured I'd post this one first and just get get going. Start you off um, with some fundamentals. <laughs> and I'm doing some code challenge algorithms. So this one is called uh, Sum of Digits slash Digital Root. And here we're going to um, create a digital root function, um, which is defined as a recursive sum of all the digits in a number. So um, basically, we're going to take a, a number or a variable called n. We're going to take the sum of all the digits in that number, add it all together, or reduce it into a single, uh, to uh, another value, and uh, keep reducing it until we get one single digit number. So um, if you look at the example here, we have 16. We add 1 and 6, get 7. We're good to go. This one, we have 942. When we add 9 4, and 2 together, we have 15. Then we add 1 and 5 together, we have 6. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started on this kind of and show you guys how I came up with solution. So, as always, I normally, I typically do these. Um, sometimes, you know, they've been done months ago. Sometimes they're um, done a little bit um, uh, closer to the release of the video. This one I did yesterday. I was gonna re release it in a video in a video yesterday. Um, it just I got so busy, it got so late that I never got around to it. So I decided, hey, I had to start the year off with it. So um, here's what I thought of when I started working on it. So of course I got rid of the function that was in there and created my own arrow function. So cons digital root equals n arrow here. Okay, cool. So I started thinking through how to do this. This um took me a little while because I, I just kind of got hung up on one part and then um, I ended up taking a break, going to get some food, came back and was like, oh wait, I know how to fix this. <laughs> it took about like t two minutes from there and yeah, so this one, um, like I said, sometimes Code War Card is a, kind of be a breeze to a certain extent and then give you some trouble. Um, and this one, it wasn't, it wasn't so bad. I enjoyed it. It was fun to do and um, once I realized where my mistake was, why my code only worked sometimes but not all the time. Easy fix, it was good to go. So the first thing that I thought of was taking n and turning it into a, an array. And I literally, um, I literally, you know, pseudocoded, typed this out as I got started. As I said before, I like to kind of pseudocode and get my ideas together before I jump into the problem. Um, and so that's what I did. I knew I needed to turn in into an array so that I could reduce it. Um, and it literally says reduce um, in the instructions. I mean, I guess you could do it without reducing, but in my head, I'm like, yeah, definitely that's what I'm going to do. So I needed to turn it into an array so I could run these array methods on it. Um, I need to split the array, um, which, as you can see, if I turn like 16 into an array, I need to turn it into 1 and 6 as different um, indexes in our array, so I need to split it. So I knew that was the next step, was to make it an array, split it, that can all actually just be one step, but <laughs> I just kind of listed it out. Um, I need to reduce this array. And then the last thing is I knew it needed to be return a single digit um, number. So if the array was over was greater than nine, I need to reduce again. Well, I need to, to split it and reduce again. So I sat down, kind of thought of how to do this, started writing some code, getting at it, and here's what I came up with. Um, so I decided. Well, first, let me just show what I did to actually like split everything up. So I decided I was gonna make an array. Uh, an array. I called it new n, and I set that equal to n dot two string split. So what this 
does here is um it's gonna take the value of n. So let's say that value is let's use a bigger number, 942 or 456 like this test. So if the number is 456 uh yeah, if the number is 456, um I'm gonna take that number and turn it into a string because I can't um split a number. I can split a string because of how that works out in JavaScript. So um, I can't split it if it's an integer. So I turn it into a string, then I split it, and uh, that should return, in the case of 456, so I do this math now, 15. So that should return um, a 1 and a 5. So we get a 1 and a 5 there, and OK, cool. So that's now a 1 as a string and a 5 as a string. Um, I now need to turn that into a number. And actually, um, make this make a little more sense. Let's see, I can see it in action. Um, let's see, I have a variable called n. I said it the first out through my note. <laughs> I have a variable called n, and it's equal to 456, right? So then if I have new n, and I set that equal to n dot to string, Split. When I go to look at the value of new n, we see that I have four, five, six, but they have quote, single quotes around them, meaning that they're strings, so I need to turn them into integers. So in order for me to do that, I can just map over um, the array that I just created, and I can then uh, turn them back into integers. So in order to do that, I use map. I use i as the variable. Um, just going through every index, and then I'm going to use parse int to turn. Um, so with this, this is going to turn um, everything back into a number. So we're going to map over every index inside of this array that we just split. We're going to map over every index, and we're going to use this parse int command to turn that. Um, that value into an integer. So 4, 5, and 6 will no longer be strings. Instead, they're going to be integers. If I was to make a uh, variable here called new and 2 equals n dot 2 string split and then map i parse and boom. And two string is not a function because I accidentally capitalized that and I'm gonna get an error because I already declared new n two probably, but yeah, so just wanna show you guys exactly what things are gonna look like step by step. So here we go. And if we take a look at new n3, we see that we have four, five, six, but their numbers are no longer strings. Cool. So we're in a pretty good spot so far. Now we just need to reduce these numbers down into a single number. So we're going to use our reduce method. So we're going to have a and b. This I'm going to use a and b as my variable names this time. And then we're going to take a plus b and uh, once we do that that should return a single number in this case what was it 15 yeah 15 should be the number that we get so if we if I just go ahead and copy this this time and do const new n4 set that equal to this there is an error Um, did I close everything out correctly? Okay, so new in five. Okay, let's do this just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Five. Oh, great. So we're going to use the deuce here. 
a b a plus b close that out and change new n3 to new n5 cool so then if we do new n5 here and see what we have we have 15. so we know that this is working so far so so far um we're doing what we need to do we're reducing it down and now we have um, four, 456 has been reduced down to 15. Um, so we're in a good spot. The only problem now is that we want to repeat this um, if the number is greater than 10, greater than 9, um, actually. So in order to do that, we need to use a, I decided the best thing to do was to use a loop. I decided to use a loop that I rarely ever use, but as soon as I got to this point, I was like, it makes sense that I'm going to use a while loop here. I started writing out a for loop, and then I was like, wait, what am I doing? Why would I write a for loop? Just do a while loop. Um, and I don't remember the last time I've actually used a while loop, other than when I learned how a while loop works. And so, yeah, so I just, you know, went for the while loop. So while my conditional is that n is greater than nine, then it needs to run this code here that we already wrote. So let's move everything so it looks a little better, more clean. Okay, cool. So while n is greater than nine, run this code. So, so far we're in a good spot. We know that um, in the example we have 456. When um, 456 is greater than 9, so it's going to execute this code in between the brackets. And then for uh, it's it's going to run again because n is always going to be 456 at this point. So it's just going to keep running and running and running and running. So here we need to return um, the new value of n. We need to give n a new value. So we're going to set n equal to new n. Because, um, again, new n is going to run this command, new n's new value after all of this is over, of the example of 456, is going to be 9. I'm, I'm sorry, it's going to be um 15. So, when we set n equal to 15 now, it's going to look, it's going to say n is now 15, we we'll run this again, it's going to run again, and then it's to give us 6. So, we're in a pretty uh, good spot, we actually need to return n here. And we need to lowercase the n right there. And uh, I believe that's that's pretty much the end of it. So we're in a good spot. I, I did some console logging um, to figure this out. I think I did a console log on n originally just to see how, uh, make sure that it was running correctly, make sure I was going to write value. I think I did a console log. Um, I did a console log here and I did a console log after. So when this originally runs, I believe it's. 456 is going to log out here, and then after um, n is converted, n is going to turn into uh, to uh, 15, <laughs> and then it's going to run again, and it's going to be 15, then it's going to be 6, and it's going to return 6, and everything's all good to go. So we can go ahead and run the sample test here and see what we got here, see if we made any mistakes. It looks like I did make a mistake. So I have recruit here instead of reduce. So that's definitely not going to work. Run our sample test again. Okay, so we passed the two sample tests that we have here. So we're going to attempt. We should pass all of the other tests. And yeah, we did. We passed all the other tests. So this was a fun, uh, a fun code counter to do. I really enjoyed it. Um, I know there's probably some better solutions out there, especially if you're into math and you're just like, oh, wait, this, you know, I could use this formula and it's so much easier to get through. You know, maybe I took a lot of extra steps in my code. Um, but if you have any better solutions, I would love to see your solution. You can either drop it in the comment section or you can tweet me at Fire, and I'll definitely take a look at it. And, um, you know, I would just love to see any solutions in any way that you went through went about doing this problem um and that's pretty much going to be the end of this video um to all my subscribers out there i want to thank you for subscribing to my channel um 
everybody that watched the video, thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber, um, I would definitely appreciate if you appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. I really appreciate it. If this video, if you enjoyed it, if it helped you uh, think more like a programmer or, you know, kind of figure out how to do code algorithms like this. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of intimidated or don't like doing these kind of code challenges and algorithms. So I like to make these videos to kind of help those people see how to break these problems down. And, you know, if, if you enjoyed this, if this helped you, I would appreciate it if you just dropped a like. It, it really helps out a lot. Um, it helps me get into, uh, it helps me get in front of more people so that I can also help them in their coding journey. So, um, like I said, thanks for watching and have a happy new year.